In today's episode on the Wet Mammal Channel, we are spearfishing Sydney for snapper. My trusted dive buddy Andy and I go for a dive before work and see what we can come up with. Australian snapper is probably one of the hardest fish to hunt on the East Coast. <laughs> it's absolutely delicious. Aside from that, we encounter some crazy fish and fish that I don't think anybody else has seen this close to the coast. Ridiculous. And we're going to do a mad catch and cook at the end. So stay tuned. You're going to love this. So today we're diving one of Sydney's most popular surf beaches. I'm going to be a bit of a gatekeeper, but from the drone shots and the fact that it's a popular surfing destination, you guys should be able to work it out. We hop in the water nice and early. We did actually bump into some Spiros in the car park and they gave us their dive reports, which was basically not a ton of fish around and not great viz. But regardless, the viz looks good from the drone and we're both here and we're keen to get wet. So let's just do it, let's dive. Swimming out with that in mind, I decided to take on this flute fish and I just line them up. Quite a hard fish to shoot. Given the fact that they're a long, slim fish with not much of a profile, I line up my shot and do my best but bang, smack him in the head. Couldn't believe this, I'd knocked the fish out cold so the spear didn't actually go through the fish. Um, he'd just taken a solid dink to the head and that was him just completely knocked out. So swim down, grab him, happy days. You'll see that he's got a slight scuff on the top of his head and that's where the spear hit. So pretty crazy that I managed to get him. Um, yeah, funky, funky fish. They look like they're gonna be absolutely wicked to eat. <laughs> Andy's not too impressed and thinks, why am I diving? Andy's not too impressed and probably thinks, why am I diving with this pom again? But I'm absolutely stoked, so chuck him on the speed spike and away we go. And how ridiculous are these Wet Mammal Aim Right Edition spear guns in the water? If you want to grab your hands on one, link in the description. Me and Andy didn't really have high hopes after speaking to the guys in the car. After speaking to the guys in the car park, we weren't too keen that we would see too many fish, but it seems like they were either looking in the wrong spot or the fish just came on. Here's a nice six spine chilling under this cave. Gives me the perfect opportunity. I'm gonna pull the trigger. I don't think I've shot a leather jacket this year. We've heard a pretty bad report, so might as well take what we can get and they're absolutely delicious. They are a good little fish. Um, yeah, just not commonly targeted by myself anymore. With this like this, anything can come through it. You can be down on the bottom and all of a sudden a shark comes out of nowhere, a seal, a turtle, or a school of fish. So just be on your guard. Seeing this blue groper in the mid water chilling up high, that's a really, really good indicator. Whenever I see blue gropers acting this way, there's usually good schooling fish nearby. So we decided to keep diving this ledge. I did actually see three kingfish, which didn't really show up on the footage but there were three kingfish. One of them was probably legal and the other two were definitely undersized, but they didn't come in close enough for a kiss. But I absolutely love diving in this viz. It reminds me of the UK. Like this is typical viz for the UK. It's pretty hazy. Um, the water's still cold on this particular day. And yeah, it was just, awesome i just felt really really comfy in the water and um, probably the best diving i've had since i've been in fiji to be honest i just felt really really calm and at one and um, i always perform better in low vis which is really really strange but yeah it's just kind of how i grew up i guess so i'm snooping out this ledge just seeing if there's going to be any traveling fish coming through you can see that there's juvenile snapper come right up and the lovely school of bonito i reach out and it was a bit of a rookie mistake with the bonnies i like to typically keep my gun pretty close to me and have them school past and then i'll take a hip shot but on this occasion yeah wrong move sam but i did like this rock in this ledge nice with that baby snapper there. in mind yeah i put I my gun out and as soon Let Andy have the dive down and once he comes up, I decide to take my dive down. So go down to the ledge that I'd been eyeing up before. Looks like a really, really good spot where I can just hide my entire body. There's not too much current. Usually there's a bit of current through here and you'll just get bashed against the rocks and it's no fun. You'll make a ton of noise and spook off all the fish anyways. So on a day like today, 
it's absolutely perfect. I want to start just by checking out the ledge, making sure that there's nothing down on the lower section of this rock. And once I've done my little sweep to make sure that there's not a snapper just kind of chilling, I want to just hang back and conceal as much of my body as possible. So drop my body over the side, look out into the distance and then just patiently wait. I want to do a quick little check behind me, make sure that a bull shark isn't going to just come out of nowhere. But um, yeah, aside from that, I'm going to stay focused on what's coming forward because that's the deeper water. I can already see that there's a couple of snapper. There's some nice brim, but they haven't shown up well on the camera at all. But this little guy takes my fancy. I'm like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Like a little snapper. If we just hold our ground, a bigger fish should roll through. And sure enough, patience pays off and a snapper just decides to roll on in. Take a nice little shot. Unfortunately, I get him in his eyes, which I'm shooting way too many fish in the eyes these days. Um, I don't mean to, it's just yeah, quite hard to predict with the low vis, kind of exactly where the fish is and the fish's size. You don't have much reference, so yeah, occasionally they get in the eyes. Head to the surface, Number. I'm absolutely stoked. That's a pretty good sized snapper for Sydney, about 50 centimeters, um, which yeah, didn't anticipate shooting this guy. Obviously I started the dive with a flute fish. Um, yeah, didn't anticipate coming across this snapper, but absolutely stoked, Andy's stoked, we're all stoked, frothing it. So first things first, we want to brain the fish, just put it out of its misery like we always do, and then we're going to want to bleed it. There was heaps of brim down there, and I just waited and waited and waited, some big brim were coming in, some salt snapper, and then that guy. And uh, now I was kind of like drifting along the edge, with like one side of my body hidden by it, and I was facing out that way. Get as much blood out of the fish as possible, and just optimise that meat quality and the sweetness. It's the right thing to do. With a bit of a strange bag being a flute fish, a six spine leather jacket, and now a pretty healthy Sydney snapper, um, we decide to shoe on and see if we can chase up any kings or another snapper for Andy. Whilst I'm getting reloaded, the most insane school of fish comes out of the water that I didn't anticipate ever bumping into on the coast ever in my life. It is a school of oceanic toadfish. These guys are absolutely beautiful, really, really cool to see. Andy has a dive amongst them. Yeah, they're just not showing up on the camera very well, but yeah, there's oceanic toadfish this close to the coast in like 15 meters of water. Absolutely ridiculous. Unfortunately, you can't really see them and yeah, don't worry. I do know what I'm talking about. Those are damselfish, but there's occasional toadfish in there. We decide to have a couple more dives. Andy isn't doing so well on this dive for fish. He's seen a nice couple of goat fish, but not too much. Everything seems to be keeping its distance in the murk. I have another dive down and you can see just how fishy this is. There is fish absolutely everywhere. I believe that there's a tailor that comes in on me on this dive, but it could have been a salmon. Um, the footage looks more like a salmon, but when I was on the dive, I could have sworn it was a tailor. <laughs> uh, it's moving through. Maybe you can tell me in the comment section what you think that fish is, but I thought it was a tailor. Maybe it is a salmon. I think I'm definitely gonna have to upgrade the camera. I'm like 100% sure that that's a salmon, but on the day I thought it was a tailor. Um, anyway, got sidetracked. On my way up, I did actually manage to spot another snapper and give the point out to Andy, it was behind the old wife. Strange seeing the old wives come up into the mid water, but yeah, um, Andy had a dive down, but unfortunately that snapper was long gone. It would have been another healthy kilo, two kilo snapper, um, but unfortunately he evades. I go down for another dive and this spot is just so fishy, it's absolutely perfect. I've got good buoyancy down at this depth, so I can just kind of float and chill. Um, I won't sink right down to the bottom and I won't float up to the top. So it's absolutely perfect and then all these salmon just come in on me. Absolutely wicked to see, but as you can see I'm looking around, really after a kingy, um, but look, I don't mind salmon. They're great on the smoker, um, they're great fried as a like fresh eating fish, 
and I decided to take a shot. You'll see that my shot placement on this fish wasn't great. Um, if you go back through the footage, you'll see that the salmon has a little sprint just before I pulled the trigger, and I didn't anticipate that, so my shot carries down his body, but it would have been quite a close shot to its head. But yeah, he decided to give that extra little spurt, so unfortunately I got him on the body. Um, yeah, shit happens. I, l I play the salmon a little bit just so that Andy can have a chance and maybe draw in a kingfish or some bonito or just something that would be interested in a salmon flapping around on the end of a spear. Um, can't remember what I was pointing out to him here, but yeah, just trying to get him onto a onto a nice fish. After a short second, after 20 seconds or so of that, I decided to pull him in and put him out of his misery. It is a bit cruel to play a fish. Um, it can be helpful sometimes, but yeah, we really should be putting these fish out as quickly as possible and then bleeding them. And that's how you get the most out of your Australian salmon or your kawai. And yeah, I promise you, it's a good eating fish. If you cook it fresh and you do all the right things, it's good eating. I decided to burly up in this location with the salmon, so I just use his scales. I've already dropped his gills out and I'll splay him open and chuck his guts down into the water column. This is just to try and attract snapper specifically, um, but you never know, you could get kingies come in, bonito come in, mackerel come in, um, other fish that we like to shoot. I also find that getting rid of all the guts in the waters a really good thing to do for the environment, so you're not taking so much biomass out, you are actually giving a little bit of what you take back to the environment, which will feed the bait fish and all the rest of it so try and keep it in the water if you can um, if you can make use of the offal absolutely great go for gold we decide to call it for a day because both of us have meetings and we're gonna be late and wet but on the way back I did spot this guy from the surface and just thought right need to have you in my belly because of you are absolutely delicious did anybody else spot it and if so what point did you spot it I don't know how, but my eye is just absolutely dialed for octopus. I, like, never seem to miss them. They're everywhere, and they are bloody delicious. Get them to the surface, and um, they always give you a, a good little fight. So I genuinely believe that biting down on the brain is the best way to kill these guys. The struggle is minimal, and it doesn't taste bad. You know when the, the brain pops, you know that you've done your, your job. The animal will go completely slack and yeah, they typically lose their coloration like this. They'll go a bit gray. Um, they might go like half white and then half in color, but they are dead. There's no movement and that's the right thing to do by the animal and also by the meat quality. Um, it stops them being really, really stressed out for long periods of time, which will just leak a whole heap of chemicals that can affect the taste and reduce the quality of the meat. So definitely want to avoid that and that's the dive done so not bad for a quick one and a half hour dive before work I just finished up this morning's dive cheeky one before work and got a sydney octopus got a flute fish which we're going to make an undesirables episode of we've got a lovely horseshoe leather jacket which we absolutely love or well, it's not a horseshoe it's a six spine so lovely leather jacket then we've got a australian salmon worst shot of the season <laughs> and then we've got a snapper proud of that sydney snapper good size um yeah pretty tasty fish hard to hunt definitely tested the breath hold but well worth it so did you shoot him in the eye yeah shot him straight through his eyes well like there i was a bit low on the shot but yeah is what it is absolutely stoked snapper on so quickly get into the garden get into some parsley I'm gonna take a whole heap from this one because it's just going absolutely wild it's a nice bunch there and we're gonna come along and we'll just grab a little bit of salt bush it's still growing so won't take too much and we're just gonna take from off the top here as well lovely salt bush and parsley from the garden and now it's into the kitchen, we're gonna get some peppercorns, freshly grind them up with the pestle and mortar. And yeah, honestly, tastes incredible, makes a hell of a difference, especially when you're roasting. We're going for some chopped parsley, chop it as fine as you want. Um, I like it fairly fine. 
Then we're going to crush our garlic so that we can remove the peel, cut the ends off and get ready to slice them up. Happy days. I've been crushing garlics like this and never sliced my hand, so before somebody says that's super unsafe, it probably is, but it works. Next, we're gonna chop up some capers, chop them up so they're nice and mushy, and they will go into the mix very nicely. Quick check out of the snapper. I've actually like scaled this one in a funky way because he was partially scaled when he was put into the fridge, um, and I just found it was easier to remove the scales. Really, really excited to cook him up. Once we've got all our ingredients, we're literally just going to chuck them into a bowl and then mix that up with some oil. So we've got garlic, we've got a pinch of salt, not too much because if we are gonna get salt from the capers and also from the salt bush. Whole heap of pepper, I love pepper so that can go in. Happy days. And then all of our cut parsley. Alright, so super excited to show you guys this. We've been cooking with it for a while. As you can see, she's not clean. We've already put it through its paces and we absolutely love the cob. There's a link for this in the description, but we're going to get on with roasting a snapper in it. It's going to be delicious. So, take this off. We will just rub quickly our snapper. Let's mix, try and get inside all of those lovely cuts. Lovely aeroplane going overhead. Rub this on in, work its way into that meat, rub those slices. So we just about made it fit, um, and now we're just gonna let the cooking process do its thing. Can't wait, it smells delicious. So there we have it, our snapper is roasted. Oh, how good does that look? Wait, I'll do that again. This thing smells incredible. It's got really, really crispy skin and just looks sensational, smells great. The cob has worked wonders. Excellent bit of kit. All right, so there we have it. We've got the snapper roasted up on the cob. Super excited to get stuck into this. The meat looks sensational. Oh, cooked perfectly as well. Mmm. That's a 10 out of 10. Super stoked to get a Sydney snapper. That tastes incredible. I'm gonna make myself up the salad, have the asparagus and some snapper. What do you think, Mon? It's really good. Well, I like that sauce that's going on. It's got a lot of garlic, um, capers, uh, parsley. It's very good. And I'm very much enjoying it. Big fan. What do you think of the salt bush on there? Just add a nice little salty, yeah. herby taste. Yeah, you can kind of taste it higher. Tastes delicious. Mm. 10 out of 10, what do you reckon? Um, I rate this, uh, I don't know, yeah, 10 out of 10. Wee. Very delicious. Happy days. Yeah. Tastes so good. All right. And that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Stay tuned because the next episode, I'm about to make a massive, massive, massive exciting announcement, which is literally going to change the Wet Mammal channel. And <laughs> shout out to Cobb for sending over this. Absolutely loving it and plenty more adventures to be had with it. 
really looking forward to this style of cooking it's so diverse and you can do everything and there's a black friday sale on at the moment so get yourself 20 percent off with the link in the description and yeah massive thank you for watching hope you guys have enjoyed and stay tuned for the next time until then stay wet stay fed catch ya